So right now we are out exploring in some back country and we're searching for diurnal species of snakes and lizards right now. And uh, this is a pretty unique environment, very dry. Guys, right here. Look at this, look at this, it's a snake. You got a snake? No, 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 it's a skink. Looks just like a snake, look at that right there. Oh no. Wait, where'd it go? The Australian outback is home to a variety of reptilian inhabitants, and having an encounter with one is often a matter of finding yourself walking in the right place at the right time. Today we are exploring the outlying borders of Meandara, a remote rural town that boasts over 350 square miles of pristine outback. The terrain is a rugged, seemingly endless maze of sparse and scraggly underbrush which for the most part is incredibly unforgiving when it comes to hiking. So right now we are out exploring in some back country and we're searching for diurnal species of snakes and lizards right now. King browns, bearded dragons, sand goannas, skinks of various sorts from the blue tongue to the shingle back. And uh, this is a pretty unique environment, very dry. Look at this, all of the branches just break apart. It is like a giant tinderbox out here. To help aid against the environmental challenges, we are exploring along an experienced team of animal specialists, Lockie Gilding and Max Jackson from Australian Wildlife Encounters. Working under special permits, they will be helping us navigate the landscape as we attempt to get a variety of reptilian inhabitants up close for the cameras. Good stuff to flip up right here. Guys, right here. Look at this, look at this, it's a snake. You got a snake? No, 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 it's a skink. Looks just like a snake. Look at that right there. Where? Nestled down right in the crux oh, of that log. It. You see it? I thought it was a snake up over the top of that. That is actually. That's a blue tongue skink. Hold on, you got a good shot on it? Yep. And they're not real fast, but they will oftentimes give you a great defensive display. Let me see. Hi, buddy. Let's get you out of there. Here we go. Look this way. Oh, it's getting in the grasses. Oh no. Wait, where'd it go? Okay, he's coming this way. Hi, buddy. Right here. Look at it. Look, look at that. Look, look, look at that. That is what they will do. They will rear up their heads and show you that distinctive blue tongue. That's incredible. Look at that tongue. All right, I'm gonna pick it up and let's bring it over here. Oh, without getting bit. There we go. Hi, buddy. How are you? Look at that lizard. Okay, here, back up a little bit. Wow, this is great. The blue tongue skink. Now this is one of the species I hoped we would encounter here in Australia. And when it comes to skink species, I would say that this is not only one of the most common, but also one of the most iconic. The name, blue tongue skink, you guys can imagine where that comes from. Let me sort of blow some air in front of its nose and see if I can get it to stick its tongue out. You guys ready? And they use that tongue, there you go, you see that? Sensing my hand right now, there you go, tasting my hand. Turn a little bit so you can see it there, Mario. Not aggressive at all, look at that. But oftentimes when you find them on the ground, their first defensive posture is to rear their body around, open up that mouth and go <sighs> display that large blue tongue. Now they are not venomous, but that blue tongue is aposematic, potentially warning a predator that you don't know if I'm venomous or not. And if I am and I bite you, it's gonna be a really bad day. But this lizard is completely harmless. Now, oftentimes here in Australia, people will see these reptiles in their backyard and they'll call animal services and say, I've got a snake in my backyard, somebody come and remove it. But it's more likely a skink than it is a snake. And you can see why people oftentimes misidentify them. If I hold those legs down to the side, it looks just like the body of a snake. And even when they move through the environment, their general locomotion that propels them forward makes them look like a snake. Here, I'm gonna set it down on the ground and watch the way that this reptile moves. Are you ready? Yep. You got a good shot there? I'm gonna let it go. Kinda just glides through the environment. Yeah. 
and the scales are incredibly smooth. And because they're so smooth, that allows them to easily glide over the underbrush, underneath logs, over rocks, you name it, these creatures are constantly on the move. Little nomads spending their day searching for food. Wow, that is one really awesome looking lizard. Now, one thing that's really cool about this lizard species is that they are ovoviviparous. And what that means is that they give birth to live young. Now, the blue tongue skink will give birth to anywhere between two and six baby skinks. And do you guys know what baby skinks are called? Uh, skinklets. Actually, that would be a really good name for baby skinks, but it's technically called a litter. And I guess maybe if it's a litter, like puppies, maybe an individual skinklet is called a pup? I don't know. I like skinklets. I like skinklets better. Let's officially call them skinklets. Can we talk about those little back legs? They're pretty cute, aren't they? Yeah, let's take a look at those. Let's see your legs, buddy. Look at those little stumpers. Now, they do have really sharp claws, and they're capable of climbing up and over logs, rocks, fit through narrow crevices. And they're opportunistic omnivores, which means they're always on the move, searching for small little insects, arachnids, and sometimes even feasting on plants. Now look at the length of this lizard, a little over a foot long. And this is about average size for a full grown adult. And it's really hard to distinguish between the males and the females, but typically the males grow just a bit bigger than their female counterparts. And look at that tail, short and stubby, and this lizard is not capable of dropping its tail like some lizard species. And some species of skink actually store fat in their tails, similar to that of a Gila monster, and they will actually live off of that fat during times of drought and a lack of food source. That's interesting. They have really large ear holes on the back side of their heads. So I imagine they must have great hearing, and because their bodies are so low to the ground, I imagine they sense a lot of movement in their environment. So let's say something like a dingo were to come across, it could probably feel it from quite a distance away and then be able to scurry underneath a log or into a burrow. Oh, actually, you know what? This skink has ticks on it. I don't know if you can see that. Zoom in on the side of its head there. It has two ticks. Oh, is that that lump is? Yeah, those are two ticks stuck on the side of its head. Actually, buddy, you want us to help you out? I can remove those ticks for you. Now that is a parasite on the reptile. And actually, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna remove your ticks. Because those ticks are just feeding off of this animal's blood right now. Come on a second. Actually, Mario, can you hold the skink? Stick your hand out here for a second. Hold on to the skink. I'm gonna get a multi-tool out of my bag. Oh, poor little guy. Got parasites on him. Okay, go ahead and bring him back here. Now this is not gonna hurt the lizard in any way. And actually they almost look like scales. Okay, I'm gonna just hold him down like this. No, I should be able to get him. See right there, there's a little tick. Got it. That's one, I know buddy, I know. I think he knows that we're helping him out. Oh gosh, that other one's really in there. Got it. Whoa, that's no good. That's no good, I got your ticks, bud. Look at that. All right, I'm just going to flick those off back into the wild. Don't worry, yeah. I won't flick them at you guys. This way, please. That way, all right, ready? There they go. All right, that is one happy skink. Does that feel better now that you don't have ticks on you? Look at the coloration of the eyes. Absolutely gorgeous. Golden on the outside and that dark black pupil. They have excellent eyesight during the day. And now the tongue is starting to come out. You guys noticing that? That big blue tongue, and they're using that to sense their environment. They use that to help detect chemicals, which helps them find their food. Wow. This was pretty awesome. Coming across one of the most iconic lizard species here in Australia, the blue tongue skink. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. The bizarre nature of the blue tongue skink, with its short stumpy legs, snake-like movements, and big blue tongue, certainly classified as one of the most unique reptiles we have featured on the Brave Wilderness Channel. And while they are often misidentified in Australia for being snakes, it's important to remember that these lizards, despite their aggressive display, are only interested in escaping human interaction.
and should always be considered harmless. Hey Coyote Pack, I have some exciting news. I'm proud to announce that the crew and I will be back on tour in 2018 with Brave Wilderness Live, visiting cities all across North America. Our first shows are in Anaheim and San Diego, California. From there, we head to Phoenix, Arizona. Beyond that, we will be visiting San Francisco, California, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, and Boulder, Colorado, with many more shows to be announced in the coming months. Tickets can be purchased at the Brave Wilderness website, so make sure to reserve your seats today. And don't forget, subscribe, so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave! Yeah!